Hey, it's Tuesday again. It's the time when I get together and just take about five, six minutes of your time and talk about uh, where we're at, where we're going, what happened. What happened was Sunday. That was September the 13th, and that was the regathering. Man, what a service it was in uh, from ministry to prayer to the, the invitation time to people making decisions for the Lord. We baptized folks. In fact, we've been baptizing people uh, for the last several weeks at both campuses. So that's been exciting to be a part of and see the baptisms that are taking place. But Sunday was really a phenomenal day. Uh, you should have been able, even online, to, to watch it and experience some of the, some of the uh, spiritual fervor, the, the joy that was there in the services. There was such a, an atmosphere of community and fellowship that's been missing. We've been building up to it. Praise God, what a day it was. And the Lord, uh, you know, in our hearts and minds as your pastors and as your leadership, we'd set some specific goals in our own mind of what we were shooting for. And we met those goals numerically and spiritually of what our desire was to see happen in that service. So it was great. We had lifts that had begun a new study uh, from Tony Evans on, on destiny and the will of God. We've started that. So you can get in on that. It's not too late. We started uh, with different areas of ministry with our Juanas and children's ministries. There was, uh, it was a great day. It was a full day, but it was a kickoff day into this fall. And I, I pray that you're on board and that you're ready to go. There are those of you who are still issues that are, are health issues. And we had uh, many people back in services that I hadn't seen in a while. And it was good to have them back. Some who've been on the border of those health issues or, or you know, or feel more safe now because the numbers don't, you know, you can do your own research. We've talked about this before. The numbers are continuing to go down and to flatten. Now, I know they're trying to make a bigger deal out of it and find every little negative piece they can find because it's an uh, election's coming up. But, uh, you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So look for yourself, see what's happening. See how, many, how, how few deaths are taking place. And even though there's more testing going on, fewer cases are taking place. So the percentage has been phenomenal. So anyway, I'm not gonna get into all that. You need to educate yourself. You don't let the world educate you. And most of all, you need to hear from God. And uh, that's what our desire is. If you did listen to Sunday sermon or you were in the service or online, you know I talked about Nehemiah and where he, Nehemiah had a word from God and he had a plan from God. That is, he surveyed the situation in Jerusalem with the walls being torn down, the gates were burned. I mean, the place is in disarray, it's in shambles. Nehemiah, in seeking God in prayer, got a word from God on how to rebuild the wall. The people of God got right with God. The Bible said God gave them a mind to work. They wanted to do something for the kingdom. And we are that same kind of, we're in the same kind of situation. I believe the walls, the spiritual walls and the barriers that have held back Satan for so long in America, they're crumbling around us and the enemy is creating chaos all over the country. Prayer is the answer. So I want to encourage you to pray. Pray in your home. Get your prayer life right. You know, it's uh, if you study scripture, there are times of trouble where men and women went to seek God's face. And as a result of their prayers, God answered and delivered them in times of trouble. This is an hour we need to pray for deliverance. And I want to encourage you to do that. Nehemiah prayed. The Nehemiah, the people said that they started their work under his leadership. And it says every family, and you can read the chapter three, chapter four, it starts using terms like next to him, and next to his house. It said everybody did what was in front of their home. They worked on the wall that was directly in front of them. And you know, my, my, I got a word from my, my daughter a few months ago, we were talking about ministry. She said, said something just kind of off the side, like I'm just trying to do what God's put in front of me. And that, that is so appropriate to what Nehemiah was saying. Let's work on the wall in front of where you are. Hey folks, where, where are you? What's going on in your neighborhood? What's going on in your schools? What's going on in your job? That's the wall in front of you. And we need to be praying, praying there, asking God for grace, asking God for deliverance, asking God for, to, for, to give us the boldness to build the wall as he's called us to. There was opposition. There was fear. There were enemies in Nehemiah's days. Those things still exist all around us. But you can take courage when you get on your face before the Lord in prayer. And God can do supernatural things in your life when you begin to ask in prayer. I believe in prayer. The Bible tells us this is the way to get God involved in the world that we live in. It's through seeking him and asking him and coming before him in humility and having hearts that are ready and right and set to do his will. So what's the wall? Would you be willing to adopt those houses around you, the streets you're on, begin to prayer walk it, begin to just talk to your neighbors, find out their names if you don't know them, ask them what their needs are in prayer. Would you be willing to do those kind of things? And I believe if you are, then God's going to do some supernatural work of reconstructing. And we're not building a physical wall. It's the kingdom we're involved in. And we're, we're doing kingdom work for the glory of God. So find that place that God's 
put you, get involved there. You're not there by accident. You're there by the sovereignty of God. So whether your neighborhood, uh, if you're in an apartment complex or wherever you are, ask God what he'd have you do in the context of his call on your life. These are good days. Don't let the devil talk you out of being a part of what I believe can be one of the greatest moves of God. On September 22nd, Franklin Graham is having prayer on the mall, which I think is the greatest need of the day, and I'm glad he's doing it. Uh, I would encourage you that on that September 26th is what it is. I think it might have said second, but it's September 26th. It's a Saturday. They're doing this prayer march from 12 to 2, noon to 2 p.m. Washington time. Would you be willing to take some of that time yourself and pray about your wall, your part of the wall, your place in the kingdom, the work God's called you to do? I'll, I'll be doing that, and I'm asking every one of you that are members of our church and even those who may just attend reg irregularly or watch us online, let's make let's let's commit that day especially. Every day, obviously, we should be praying, but let's take a real time where you say, hey, I'm going to set some time aside that day to pray for my nation, to pray for our leadership, to pray for my schools, my community, my neighbors. Get their names, pray for them specifically. Pray for my church, my pastors, and uh, this is a day we can see God do glorious things. So that's all the time I want to take today, but I do want to encourage you to P-R-A-Y. Pray. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday.